So for the bake out, I'm going to follow both the new instruments manual for our particular instrument and also some service notes that I, uh, we've uh, transcribed from the last time the engineer from the factory was out here to do the same thing. So uh, anytime you're doing a process like this, it's always uh, essential that you refer back to the owner's manual, follow all of the safety and precautions and steps that are outlined in the manual. Here at the back panel of the instrument, HT, 1KV, and collector units all need to be off. The ion control units also have to be off. Done by a simple switch on the front of the, the control unit. In our instance, they were already off because we um, just changed out an ion pump yesterday. But if you're just baking out, just ensure that these units are off. Here at the collector block, we're gonna remove all of the wires for the Faraday feed-throughs and also the ion counter um, leads. The feed-throughs for the Faradays are removed by loosening the set screw and pull them out. And then the, the wires on the collector block, you just slide and pull straight out. And you wanna make sure you pull these straight out so you do not bend, bend the pins. And you could just lay the wires along the side on the outside of the instrument. The two feed throughs on the quad lenses also need to be removed. You'll do it in the same manner that you removed the previous feed throughs. Undo the set screw, pull them straight out. Here on the back side of the instrument, we'll remove the feed through for the ESA. And also the feed through for the transfer lens stack. The monitor box on the ESA needs to be removed. It's not sufficient to remove just the cable on the back. You actually have to remove the entire monitor box, unscrewing it in this manner, and pull it straight out, and it comes right off. Just lay that along that side of the instrument. The electrical feeds for the three ion pumps now need to be removed. Here, the one closest to the collector block, you just reach down and pull it straight out. And then you'll want to feed the electrical wire through the bottom of the cabinet so when you bake, that wire is not being baked. And it'll just drop down into the bottom of the cabinet. Here on the back side of the instrument, at the ion pump near the transfer lens stack, to remove it, simply reach down, pull straight down, and you'll hear it unclip. And then make sure it drops all the way through the bottom of the cabinet so it's not included in the bake out. Here on the back side of the instrument, at the ion pump next along the ESA, uh, we have a different type of electrical connector. We're going to loosen the screws and remove it that way. To not torque the connector, you have to alternate back and forth. few turns on each one, otherwise you will torque the actual electrical connection. Once they're removed, pull it straight out and set the wire along the side of the instrument. Now we're going to remove the preamp bin, which sits underneath the collector block. The first thing to do is remove the two circular connectors. Sit, take the wire and set it on the outside of the instrument. And then we have to remove the vacuum hose. But before you do, you have to ensure that the, that the head amp, which is located Underneath the magnet on the front side of the instrument is closed. Unscrew the connector slightly and that will um, vent the chamber. And then you can pull it off 
and set the hose on the outside of the cabinet. To remove the preamp bin, after all the electrical and vacuum connections have been, uh, been removed, you have to prop it up with one hand and it's, a, it's heavy. So make sure that you have a good, good hold on it. The pins in it can be easily bent, so this is critical that you hold it into place. There's two clips, one on each side. Undo the clips, ensuring that you're holding it upright. And now drop it straight down. And then you'll have to remove the unit. Be careful not to hit the pins against anything. And then you'll want to cover it with a clean piece of pin foil. And during the bake out, we will store this in a dry box. Anytime you have electrical components that are not being used, it's best to store them in a dry box. This is the preamp housing that we just removed. Now we're gonna remove the magnet and slide it forward. The first step, remove the little panel. You need an Allen wrench to remove the four bolts on the back of the enclosure of the magnet. You'll need to support the bottom of this cover because it will fall once you remove the last screw. Once the back panel is removed, Now we're ready to slide the magnet forward. To do that, you first must make sure the two set screws are tight. And this ensures that when you go to replace the magnet back in position after the bake out, it returns to the exact same position. So therefore, if these are tight, which they are in this case, all you'll do is remove the center nut. So you'll unscrew the center. Now we're ready to push the magnet to the front of the cabinet. As we push the magnet forward, it, it will slide on rollers. So just uh, grab up on the top and below and slowly push it. All the way to the rear of the cabinet. So we want to take a piece of tin foil and cover each of the feed throughs um, where we remove the electrical connections just to protect them from the bake out a little bit. And we'll work our way around the entire instrument so wherever we took off an electrical connection. Your new plasma may or may not have an ion gauge on it. This is something we added later. 
but this has to be removed as well. Four screws on the back and an electrical connection, and then it just comes right off. And then you will want to cover this port as well with tin foil. We also want to wrap the connections um, from the ion pumps. We also want to take a piece of tin foil and cover the underside of the preamp housing on the bottom of the collector block. Be careful you don't hit any of the pins up in there. Putting the tinfoil on just protects the pins that go inside the electrical cables. Now we're going to cover the thin flight tube where it, the magnet was on top of it. Because it's very thin in this area, we want to cover it with an additional layer, couple layers of aluminum foil. So we uh, have kept the original bake-out oven from installation. The heater that slides underneath the flight tube is the one attached to a large metal tray. The single heater goes underneath the flight tube by the collector block and you want to orient it parallel with the flight tube. So the double heater goes on the ESA part of the flight tube and slide the one end underneath and orient it in that manner and the other one can go on the back side over here. So we're now going to attach a thermocouple by each heater and so the first one by the collector block will actually get set on the opposite side of the flight tube away from the heater. So I like to run it through the holes to help hold it in place up here and then I'm going to use a piece of tin foil. You could use a uh, a piece of uh, thermal tape as well, but the tin foil works just fine. The second thermal couple, which gets situated on the top of the flight tube uh, where it's curved by the magnet, we already have aluminum foil on there, so I'm just going to slide this underneath the aluminum foil, make sure that I'm right on top of the flight tube, and then secure it that way. So on the ESA, um, the thermocouple that goes there, we will put through the hole in the instrument and set it right on top between the two, the third and the fourth heater. And once again, I will use a piece of tin foil to keep it in position. And this one thermocouple is for both of the source heaters. Now it's time to plug everything in. First the heating element for the collector and the thermocouple for the collector. Then the heating element for the flight tube and the thermocouple for the flight tube. And finally the heating element for the source and the thermocouple for the source. We're ready to put the ovens on. So the oven to our instrument comes in three different sections and it's just a matter of putting them on one at a time. All the components that you want baked out, such as the ion pumps, the flight tube, those are all gonna be situated within the oven. All the leads and the connections are outside. And now to tuck the collector block in, And now for the flight tube. And you want to go around and make sure each, each uh, one of the Velcros is together. And then that the whole unit is sitting on top to actually seal the oven 
um, and to keep all the heat in. And you want to make sure these wires are outside and that the oven seals behind them. Time to bake it up. So now we're ready to um, start the bake out process. On the top ribbon, under control, it gives you a drop down menu. Click bake out and the bake out control window opens. And you're going to want to set the bake out for 12 hours. So tomorrow, and you set the time 12 hours from now. And say set, and it tells you when the bake out's going to end, and I'll see you tomorrow. Now that the bake out procedure has been started via the software, you're going to want to go to the back panel of the instrument. We want to set the temperature for the collector, should be set to 110. The temperature on the flight tube to 120 degrees C. And the temperature on the ESA to 110. And then the, the lights are on right now because heat is being applied to the heating elements and the thermocouple is plugged in. However, I'm going to unplug the thermocouple here and plug it into a meter so I can monitor the, the temperature. That way, I'm going to monitor it for at least the next half an hour to an hour as the temperature keeps rising because I want to make sure that when, when the, the temperature in the oven hits the right temperature that we've set, set it for, that they actually turn off. 12 hours later, the bake out is done. We're going to reassemble the instrument in reverse order, just as the manual states.